in my basement, it's covered in PBR parts. You pull into my garage, it's covered in PBR parts. For a month, we had engines in there. Um, my wife never has complained, never once said anything. Every once in a while she says, can you put your phone down for a few minutes and just kind of be here in the moment with us? And I respect that. I actually bought this boat off of eBay. I was looking for a, a boat and I was going through eBay and it said a Mark II Vietnam era PBR. I said, no, that can't be, that's what I was on. So I like to see history preserved. Our country wants to eradicate the history of the Vietnam War by doing away with all this hardware. Some people look at it, I think, as this shameful thing, while others of us look at it in pride. The PBR is a high-speed fiberglass boat, drawing only 18 inches of water, with no propellers or other hull protrusions. It is powered at speeds up to 25 knots by water jet pumps, which not only drive the boat, but also steer it. I know when, when you're in Vietnam and we'd push both the throttles forward, we'd lose men off the, the back of the boat and had to go pick them back up because they weren't expecting that they weren't holding on to anything and they'd just Go out the back. <laughs> this boat was so well thought out that it served up and through desert storms. Some guys were serving on these up until like 1998. So you're looking from 1968 to 1998. 30 years of service the PBR Mark II saw with very little changes. I was an engineer in the United States Navy for four years. I arrive very early, I think February or late, no, late February of 70 and I come home February of 71. On the back of the boat was my position. I had a mortar, a 60 millimeter mortar, and then an M60 on top of the machine gun. We got into a big fight one night, and the next morning when we got the boat back to our base, I had about eight holes through my mufflers, in one side, out the other. But you don't hear them because the boat is fiberglass, and there's so much going on you're not gonna hear. I got a little excited. And all I did was beach the boat, patch up the holes, paint them green, and away you go. And that one got that one got me fairly excited. We caught a Viet Cong, and we got him on the back of our boat. And um, I took a picture of him. He's sitting right back here, where he's on this side, and he's like this. And one of the guys said, "Whose turn?" It was mine. So I shot him in the head and threw him overboard. How was it? Well, we rarely captured him. We didn't, we never let that, typically wouldn't let that happen. We just happened to catch this guy just by accident. So, my job that day. I regret that. I've dealt with it in PTSD classes. Um, it would have been me, would have been one of the other guys. That's not how I was thinking at that moment, but uh, looking back after all these years, it's my worst haunt is that we could have taken them back. Oh, you know, or I could have said to them, one of the guys, I don't want to do it. And they, nobody would have cared if I did it or not. But I did, it's my job. That was one of my reasons for uh, trying to find a boat. Because ever since I was in Vietnam, I said, well, I'd like to restore one and use it for helping Vietnam veterans. You know, the water therapy, it's sort of like a horse therapy or dog therapy or something like that for, for us. So that's why I started this project. One day I was talking with one of my best friends. We were uh, smoking cigars, working on wood, you know, doing manly stuff. And I mentioned to him I thought it'd be cool to get a boat specific to Vietnam to make it available to the community and veterans often and he just told me, why not? Uh, why not try? So I got a hold of a list of all the PBRs. I went down the list and tried to, I called everyone I could call or emailed. And most people laughed at me. And most people said, yeah, you can have my PBR for $250,000. And John McClure was the only one who said, I think we can maybe make something happen. I called the guy up then. I said, how much would you take for the boat? And he told me, I said, well, I can't afford that. I said, would you take any less for a, 
a Navy veteran and one that was actually on boats in Vietnam. She's in rough shape. She has not seen a good coat of paint in I don't know how long. The engines were sitting on two by fours and they had broken. Those things are 2,000 pounds a piece. They're laying in the engine compartment. Oil is everywhere. The deck that you're standing on, you can see through parts of it because it's just been faded and worn. There was no armor. There was no armor on the front. There was no paint. There was no frame, canopy wasn't up. None of this was here. It literally was the hull in this. I'd been trying to get it restored and Robert Boyer came along and he's really helped out in that. He's uh, started the Operation Black Sheep organization, got it incorporated and got the 501c3 for it. Served in Afghanistan, two tours, 05 to 06, 07 to 08 with the 173rd Airborne Brigade. Born and raised in Muskegon, Michigan. MCC graduate and Grand Valley graduate and then wanted to kind of change the pace of things. So started this. I looked around at different names and I really felt like it applied to the way that our country treated its veterans. That they're the black sheep of the community. That they were, were this odd man out, you know, and for post-Vietnam, you were a potential John Rambo. You were a bomb waiting to go off. You know, once you go to war, you come back, you're gonna be different in some form or another. And sometimes you're proud to stand out from the flock, but some days it's not always the best thing. It's a four-man crew. You have an after gunner, a forward gunner, a boat captain, and a, a guy here on the engine covers. And I normally rotated around here. Our normal patrols was like 18 hours. Well, we would get intelligence reports about VC crossings, and we were to interdict and stop the uh, flow of contraband into South Vietnam. We also, during the daytime, on your daytime patrols, would stop sandpans and junks and search them for contraband and make sure they had their ID cards and weren't carrying any weapons. Most of the uh, firefights occurred during nighttime, you know. The PBRs in Vietnam had, uh, it's like an overall casualty rate of 85% wounded or killed. Every guy I've met, I don't know, I don't know the statistics as far as that, but I have met a dozen guys who all stood, they were can they say well, I was a canopy gunner. When they say I was a canopy gunner, that means they stood on the canopy and they manned an M60. Every single guy I've met that had that was a recipient of the Purple Heart. I have not met one that's like, oh yeah, I stood up there and never got shot. Like, it, it amazes me, and, and at the time, if I told you in modern combat you were going to do that, I would be in so much trouble, some mom and dad would call home to the states, they'd be yelling up and down at us, I'd probably lose a stripe over it, and those guys did it without hesitation. I was just starting PTSD therapy at uh, Grand Rapids VA, and I wasn't quite sure what I would do with it, I had to, I had to see the boat first, and then, but it was, it was a good thing for me. Very good thing. So if you put a value to man hours, all the volunteer hours, um, I'd say we're probably in about a $70,000 mark. Our engines were redone in Ohio. Almost everything else has come from Muskegon or to Grand Rapids. A lot of our steel and armor is here from Muskegon and a company in Grand Rapids, Constructive Sheet Metal, keeps sending us stuff. Federal Mogul, a $12 billion company, and they call me up and they say, any parts you need, if we make them, you got it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. Um, this is something I never dreamed I would ever see one of these boats again, much less be on one and ride in one. Um, I just can't wait for my family to be able to go out with me and hopefully experience a little bit of what it's like to cruise down a river in one of these things. It's amazing. I spent 26 years in the Navy and just got, I retired in 1993 as a Navy captain. And so I, I enjoyed it, and if I had to do over again, I probably would.